Hi guys, how you doing? It's me Kelly. Hope you guys are having a great day. This is going to be a little vlog. This is for, I, I've gotten, I get more emails, I swear to, to God, that uh, people ask me what my hair looks like down. And why do I always wear it up? It's because it looks like this. I have very naturally curly hair, although last night I went to bed with it wet. I didn't fully dry it after my shower. So like this is, I mean, I'm a little, I'm, it's a little messy. This is it. This is the hot mess of my hair. And why I don't cut it, I have no idea. But it's really curly. Like yesterday was humid here. And uh, I went out and had to go get blood and all kinds of stuff done. So um, when I came home, my hair, <laughs> I took it out of my ponytail and my hair was like <laughs> scrunched to my head. It shrunk like up to here. It was awful. So this is what my hair looks like uh, when it's down. And um, it's, a, uh, it's a hot mess. But it's very curly. And uh, it needs colored very badly. But I wear it up because, and this is what I do, this is how I get that beautiful, beautiful ponytail. <laughs> I wear it up because when I'm painting or doing clay or doing whatever I do, why is it so weird now? Um, I have to get it out of my face. So why have long hair, you ask? I don't know. But right now, as of right now, um, that's nice. <laughs> that's just real nice. Um it's falling out. It's, it always has fallen out because of all the medication and the illnesses that I deal with. But lately, um, like, I don't know if you can, this is very embarrassing. You might not be able to see this because I don't know. Can't see all these little, like it is like falling out like crazy and growing back. So I have like these little piecey pieces. So when I pull my hair back and then it, I have pieces sticking out. I don't know. It's not, it's not fun. It's not fun. But I, I know that so many of you ask about my hair. I don't, I don't know. I didn't. Oh, wait, now you got to see me up close. Okay. But anyway, so that's kind of, that's kind of what I do. And I just pull it up like that and I have dog ears and that's just how I am. But, uh, yeah, so that's the hair deal. It's down. It's pretty long. It's wicked curly. It needs colored cause I saw some gray hairs in there. And, uh, but I do, I pull it up because when I'm working, it goes on my face when I'm painting, I don't want hair on my paint, my pictures and stuff and in my clay. So I pull it up or I put it on top of my head like this. This is enjoyable. Hopefully, hopefully my uh, thumbnail picture. Yeah, I do that. Isn't that attractive? I could be like a sumo wrestler. Yeah, hopefully that'll be my uh, picture when I upload it. My little thumbnail. Yeah, that's me. Anyway, um, so that's that. <laughs> I don't know. Ridiculous. But I thought, okay, before I pull it up, I will... Uh, I will show you everybody who asks me, but that's, that's it. I know. All right. I hope you didn't see anything inappropriate because I think I got holes in the shirt in places that you might not want to see. All right. So let me ask you guys a question. How many of you guys deal with uh, mental illness, depression, or know somebody who does or have a child that does? I get a lot of uh, messages. I get a lot of people, beautiful people, uh, emailing me, uh, telling me their stories, telling me what they deal with. Um, as most of you know, uh, my daughter deals with um, panic and anxiety and depression. And uh, my son was bipolar and manic and uh, other things. Uh, he uh, took his life a little over four years ago um, at 19. And uh, then my anxiety and depression and manic got, or not manic, depression, anxiety, and panic got uh, way out of control. I've always had depression. I've always been chronically, uh, clinically depressed. Um, so bad to the point of where I couldn't get out of bed and I wouldn't get out of bed. Um, and they couldn't find medicine to work for me. And it was, it was horrific. It was, a, it was bad. It was bad. And, and my kids were young and, um, but I've always suffered from that. I've always suffered from violent, uh, chronic migraines. That's another thing I have since I was probably six, seven years old until now where I get, uh, I get ocular migraines, which I go blind. I get violent migraines. Now my daughter is getting the migraines. Um, and it's, it, 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 for those of you who get migraines, you guys know how, uh, how bad they can be. Um, but I, I've come across so many people and all of them are misunderstood in one way or another. A lot of them will say to me, my husband doesn't understand. My kids don't understand. My parents don't understand. My friends don't understand. And 
it like breaks my heart because I know how hard it is when people don't understand when people, and I, you know what, and I'm going to be brutally honest here and cause I, that's just how I am. My daughter suffers from anxiety and whatnot and it intensified after my son died. Um, and sometimes I'm not, um, I'm not as empathetic as I should be or sympathetic or whatever word I want to say. Sometimes, even though I deal with it on a daily basis and I know how hard it is, it's really hard for me. And I don't know if it's because I'm just so overwhelmed in so many ways that I can't, you know, sometimes maybe you guys understand that sometimes it's so hard to get through the day of what you absolutely have to do. And you just have no energy, no mindset to regardless of what you're dealing with, um, to make like to, to do anything else, to take on anything else. And that's not fair to the people who, you know, like my daughter or whatever, but, um, and I, that's a mistake on my part. I try really hard. I know my husband tries really hard, but we just don't sometimes hit it for her. You know what I mean? We just, it, we make her, I guess, feel, you know, insignificant sometimes. And a lot of it is because we are so overwhelmed with so many things and that's an excuse. It's not, right or anything like that. It's just, I, you know, I wish I knew how to change that and it breaks my heart. So when all these people are writing me and stuff, it makes me think of my daughter in the sense of what am I doing to, it, what am I doing that's making my daughter feel that way? And even though I'm conscious of it sometimes, uh, it's easy to fall back in patterns and, and be, and I'm not proud of it at all, but it's part of my life and it's hard and I hate it. And I just wish I could snap and get out of it. But if you're dealing with these type of things, if you're dealing with somebody who's manic or, and this is just from my perspective of dealing with somebody who uh, had bipolar and, and all those kind of things and how hard it was, but the alternative of losing somebody who is suffering with those things is so devastating and so, so hard to deal with. Um, because then you sit to yourself and think, oh, you know, and we went through hell with my son. Um, he was, uh, probably, he was always wicked intelligent, wicked smart. He was just, he had no fear. You know what I mean? He was just somebody who had no fear and just did everything he wanted to do. He never, you know, thought twice about it where my daughter's so different where, and a lot of it is fear-based and I get that cause I have a lot of fear base as well. I don't like leaving the house a lot. And anyway, that's a whole other story, but, um, he just dealing with him when he, when he turned in eighth grade, he never got in trouble or anything, but when he was in eighth grade was his first time he had gotten in trouble. Him and all his friends, he had a lot of friends living in the neighborhood and, um, they had, I laugh about it now because even at the time it was kind of funny, even though the lady turned out to be a bitch, although I understand why she was upset, but she, okay. But, um, him and a bunch of his friends, there was the librarian to their school who, who lived in here, eighth, ninth grade. Um, and she lived a street over out of our neighborhood. And the, the boys decided that, uh, I guess she wasn't letting them, she was yelling at them a lot, and wouldn't let them on the computer or do something. And I guess she was really just, uh, you know, to the kids, she was a nasty person. So my son and all his friends had to have been ninth grade, ninth grade maybe, I don't know. Um, but uh, they went to her house on her driveway and drew in chalk, um, chalk outline, body outlines that you do when the police, like dead people, you know, how they do the outlines and they did that on her driveway. And I, I can't even recall what else they did. Um, anyway, whatever they did, it was something to that effect. And they all had, there was like maybe six of the kids and they all had like different things to do. Like three, two would do this, two would do that, two would do that. So they weren't all in a driveway causing a scene. They would just go out, do what they did. And then anyway, so this was, this happened on a Saturday. My son, my son would always tell me whatever he did. It might not have been that minute, but this was the first time he didn't tell me what he did. And, uh, that was the spy down roll, downhill spiral of everything that it had, that was ha going to happen coming up. But, um, anyway, like three days later, he's out playing with his friends and uh, riding bikes and all. And he comes running in the house. And my husband wasn't home from work yet. My husband worked in Philly at the university of Pennsylvania. So he wasn't home yet. And my daughter and I were home and I was making dinner and my son comes running in the house, running up the stairs. And, uh, he's like, 
um, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, cops are coming. I, the other night we all went over to so-and-so's and, and did this and did that. And, and she called the cops. And then one of the kids t told the who, everybody who was doing it. And cause he got scared cause his parents were told and they're coming here and over. And he was just flipping out. So I was like, all right. So in the meantime, the cops come and my husband comes home and, um, the cops were very nice. We, we, you know, we kind of know the cops today because we live in a smaller community, but they were very nice. But, um, it was all depending on what this lady did. And, she, and the cops said to us, look, there was, they weren't violent. They didn't do anything to her house. It was all chalk on the driveway and, uh, all that kind of thing. But she wants to press charges. So, and these kids are like, you know, 13, maybe 12, 13, 14 years old. And, uh, so I was mad, not at her. I was mad at my son. And I grabbed him by his arm and I drug him down the steps because we live in a bi-level house. And I drag him down and I get in the car and I drive him to the lady's house, which is like a street over, and um, made him apologize. I made, I drug him up the steps and I said, look, this is one of the kids that did this, you know, and my son apologized. I said, look, I'll rape leaves. I'll do whatever. She wasn't the nicest lady and, you know, whatever. And I, I dig it. I don't want to make it seem like... Um, what they did was right because it wasn't but they were kids and I guess for me and I find this a lot more as I'm getting older things that we used to do when we were little like um a lot of it's changed because I'm an adult now but like egging houses or toilet paper houses or you know whatever we used to do we used to have hell nights and, and all that kind of stuff you know you did it people expected it as long as you didn't damage anything kids had fun and everything like that I know nowadays it's different and you know people live in a very fear-based mentality and I get it because there's so many uh weird things out there anyway so uh anyway so she took them to court and um they went to court and um it was ridiculous but so they were on probation and he was on probation and his friends were on probation until they turned 18 um and it was a probation that if they got into any other trouble got arrested or anything like that that they they could then be tried for what they did so I don't know exactly the correct terms and all that but none of them got in trouble um and every they were good and everything like that but that was where we saw the spiral of my son um getting iller and you know more ill and and more things showing uh he turned 18 he was still a senior in high school and uh as most of you know i'm sure when you turn 18 you can drop out of school yourself and I wasn't happy about that, but I had, there was, I had no recourse. There was nothing I could do. And at that point he had had a boyfriend. Um, he was uh, gay, uh, bisexual. I have no idea. All the, my daughter yells at me and tries to teach me all these terms. Um, anyway, but he, um, he was gay. He had a boyfriend. And, uh, so he was, he, they lived about 45 minutes from us. So he was staying there a bit and I didn't, he lied to us for the longest time saying it was a girl and they were, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And every time I said, you know, you have to introduce us to her and everything like that, things happened, didn't happen. And you know, it was just whatever. But, um, anyway, so they eventually moved in with us because, um, his boyfriend lost his job and had to get uh, unemployment. My son, he did drop out of high school. I was so aggravated when the school called me and said, do you know your son? And I'm like, yeah. And what are you going to do about it? You guys let him do it. Don't call and tell me, you know, but my, one thing about my son is when he wasn't even 16, he wanted to get a job. He was working probably at 15 or so at a uh, mechanics place here. Um, and, uh, they let him work there and he did all the cleaning of the bathrooms and running and doing all that kind of stuff. And, uh, when he turned 16, he wanted a legit job and he worked at Kmart forever and was, he became an assistant manager and then he didn't want to work there anymore. And he found a better job at uh, Dollar General and he ended up being manager and he loved it. I had wonderful people he worked with and, uh, but he did work. He worked full time and did all that. So, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more because what, well, you know, he could have just been doing nothing. So anyway, they moved in and he progressively got worse, What bothered what, how do I say? He never, never once said that he wanted to kill himself. Never once said, uh, anything, never, never. We had no clue. So when he did, and I'm not going to get into all this and bore you guys, but when he did, uh, it was horrific. It was a horrible day. It was, uh, something I don't want any other parent to have to go through. It was just, 
uh, was God's awful. And, um, a lot of people that I talk to always say to me, like, you should start a blog and talk about these things and be a support for people. And I don't know right now if I could do that. It's only been like a little over four years and every day it's a, it's a struggle terribly. But when people write me and I want you to continue to write me, you know, it does. It's, it's, I want to be there for people. I want to be there for my daughter, but I just want everybody to understand sometimes it's hard for me to fully commit to that and it's not you and it's not that I don't want you guys to write to me because I do um sometimes you know all you need is a somebody to listen somebody to hear um it's so tragic how this society doesn't respect people who have mentally who, who are mentally ill in whatever capacity um even disabled people and I'm not going to bring all my chronic chronic illness crap into this um, but even disabled people are treated so disrespectfully and like disrespectively, is that the word? Um, and it's just so sad to me. Um, I said to my husband the other day, I said, you know, what's really sucks is that being disabled and I can only get SSI cause I've been sick since I was 28 and I did work off and on, but I didn't go for uh, disability until I was 40, maybe 41. Um, because I worked, but I worked under the table and it, because I was only working like here and there to try to bring in, bring in extra money. And, uh, and I'd been sick for so long that when I did apply for disability, they said, well, you know, you worked, you know, you didn't work that much. I, I worked at the school. I love it was my favorite job. I worked with, um, special, uh, kids. Uh, I can't think of the name, uh, special ed special. Is that what it is? Special ed. Yeah, I think it's special ed. I can't think today. Anyway, but I did that for a couple of years before I finally had to go for disability. So anyway, so I had to get SSI, blah, blah, blah. But I said, you know, it's really a shame because, and I know a lot of people live on their own and a lot of people struggle with just getting their, dis just disability. It doesn't even matter what kind. Um, and it's so sad because they treat us like, it, not only do we have to go through life disabled, but we have to go through a life having to deal with all the, the normal stuff everybody else has to deal with, except we're on a very limited income because we're not perfect or we can't work or we can't do whatever. And it drives me insane that, you know, it's more of a struggle to be on disability. It really is sometimes because, I mean, I'm lucky my husband, he's a writer and he makes decent money and we can live and everything like that. They just cut $300 more off my SSI because they made a mistake three years ago. Well, screw me. Who cares? Uh, and, and I'm not the only one they do that to. So it's really, uh, really drives me insane. So mental uh, illness is so not taken seriously in this country at all, at all. Um, so if, if you find, I'm rambling and I don't want to get into all this. I mean, I don't want to do all this, but I want, I want you guys to know that I am here. I am very, uh, open to helping as much as I can to be a, a an ear to listen, to be, um, to be your friend, to help you when you have a bad day. You know, a lot of you I know don't have support and, uh, it's hard. It, it's heartbreaking. So I am so thankful and so glad that so many of you have found me, uh, like me, like my videos, um, that they help you, that you guys talk to me when I'm talking. Um, and it just, it, it, it heals a little part of me. Um, I'll never be healed and I'll never be over this. Neither uh, my husband or my daughter uh, as well. It's, it's devastating um, to try to move on from all this that we went through. But you guys do heal me. All of you on my YouTube really do with your comments and emails and doing, uh, so many of you are doing little odd girls and all this kind of stuff. And I watch the videos and I see the pictures and I just am like, blown away and it just fills my heart up so much because, um, little things like that make such a difference to me. So I know little things that I can do, whether it's answer an email or a comment. And some of you, I, I mean, I know I, I try to go through all the comments and do all that, um, the best that I can. That's why I always try to say like, thank you guys so much for all your comments. Cause I just want you to know each and every one that I am just blown away. Thankful. Um, but I'm here and, and if I can help anybody, I will do my best. Um, and the same with people who are chronically ill or the same with people who just have a bad day. Uh, that's what we're all here for in our community. Um, 
you guys are just so, so wonderful. And for all of you who are struggling with mental illness, and I know I bounce back and forth, but who are struggling with mental illness, who you feel that you're alone, you're not. You're not because there are so many of us out here who deal with different things. Um, and I don't want to go too much into my son's story or our story or anything like that because I don't want to trigger anybody because I know it can be very triggering. Um, I get triggered <laughs> over certain things as well. Sometimes it could be a light switch in the hall. I mean, there's just things. And I don't want to get too deep into anything because, you know, I don't want to trigger anybody. But I just want you guys to know that you guys are all loved and you all matter. I just want you guys to know that because so many of you, um, and, and my daughter included, you guys feel like you guys don't matter. And you do. You really do. And even though people don't truly understand, because people who are not dealing with what you deal with, whether it's met mental illness, whether it's chronic illness, whether it's um, uh, I don't know. It could be you just being a stay at home mom or somebody who, uh, anything, anything in life. Uh, we all have our bad days. Um, sometimes all you want to know is that you matter and that, you know what I mean? That somebody understands. And I'm sure, uh, with all the, the, the subs and all that I have and all the comments and a lot of you guys, uh, follow other, uh, YouTubers and stuff like that. And, you know, it's a nice little community and, um, you know, there's always going to be somebody who will listen to you. So just don't, don't give up and don't, don't beat yourself up. You're okay. You're okay. And you know what, if you can't, you know, whatever, I, I, this sounds so, whatever you're going through, try to get through the other side. Don't, don't give up. Don't give up. You don't know how devastating it is. Because our hands are tied. People who love you don't know what to do to help you. We try and we don't know. So don't give up. You're worth it. You matter. And like I said, there's always people around to listen and who understand what you guys, you know, are going through. And I'm one of those people. So that's it. I just, <clears throat> it's hard to write back to so many people. Um, because I don't want to write the same thing. I don't want to copy and paste. Like, I just feel that's not not appropriate on, on these type of things because this is very serious stuff and I know what it's like not to be acknowledged being ill and I know what it's like to live with somebody who is ill and I don't know it, it's it's rough but just know that you're not alone you're not alone and if you need an ear message me I will do my best to get back to you and um you know you guys matter it's just it's really it's really it's really hard because I, I don't know. It's so sad. It's just so sad that it's not taken care of in this country. Seriously. It took me months and months to try to get my son help. And before I could even get him help, it was too late. Um, I couldn't find him help anywhere. Nobody, they always had reasons or excuses or months of a, you know, they kept telling me to get him arrested and he wasn't, I just wanted to get him therapy. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a lot more educated in it now, but I just really appreciate you guys trusting me enough to uh, message me and tell me your stories and, and whatever they are, whatever they are, uh, it just touches me so deeply and I'm just so, so very blessed. And I just want you guys to know that. Um, anyway, I'm not going to keep rambling on because I, I will just keep rambling and jumping back and forth, but I just want you to guys know all of you that you matter. So if you're having to be a day or whatever, I'm sending my love and I don't know, let's just try to get through day, to, you know, day by day by day together and and do our best, you know? So I just want to thank you guys and send my love and thank all of you for writing me. Your stories are so moving and heartbreaking, some of them. And I just want like to bring you all here and move in and, you know what I mean, be able to help you guys. So that's it. I just hope you all have a great day. And if you sat through and watched this, thank you. If you didn't, it's okay. But, uh, that's it. And as always, be nice to each other. You never know, you know, be kind to each other. You never know what battle somebody else is fighting. And um, like I always say, take a minute, leave a comment on somebody's video, uh, leave a comment on somebody's post. I know, you know, we can't do everybody and, and all that kind of thing, but sometimes that one comment can make a difference in somebody who sat down and made a video and um, took time out of their day to do that. And if you watch it, just say, hey, great video. You know what I mean? And and send a little love. Just spread that positivity. Spread that love. And uh, maybe we can make a little change in somebody's life. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.